Hey Pepin. Yo, yo, yo. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Uh, it's a little past New Year's to be You're honest. Past New Year's. I'm what, sorry. You know what happens at the New Year? Um, your balls go- drop. That's what I heard, at least. I, I guess that's. I guess that's true. From some guy in New York, he told me that that my balls are gonna drop. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, they, they, they haven't already. He said there's sometimes square. I don't know. The phone was breaking up a bit. <laughs> but uh, you know what else happens? <laughs> <laughs> New Year's resolutions. People plan what things they're gonna do in the next year that are bigger tasks if they want to get done. <laughs> Do you have any New Year's resolutions, mate? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, we need to talk then. Welcome back. I am your host, Pepin, and we got my co-host here, Meter. Hey, guys, I'm Meter. He's uh, unlike G. Oh, God, I'm the ship egg. Supreme. No, no, he's the only ship egg supreme that will ever be. Good point, good point. Hey, I miss G, by the way. Hey, G, if you're listening, you need to come on the show again. We love you. Save me. Oh, oh. <laughs> also, here is the uh, second letter of the alphabet. It is B. Sub. Kind of, ga- kind of gangster. No. And today's episode is New Year's resolutions. Now, New Year's resolutions are quite the pain for some people because some businesses start going a little bit crazy around this time, particularly gyms. People often set a resolution to go back to the gym. And I know this because as an avid gym goer myself, January and February, it's kind of like a no-go time. Because it's just full of people who don't know what they're doing, just taking up equipment, and it's like, fuck you, get out of my way. See, the key is to have your resolution be to renew your gym membership. (laughs) Then your resolution isn't to go to the gym, it's just to pay to go to the gym. (laughs) (laughs) Some people actually do that, don't they? Like, it's, they... Yeah, we have a membership, you and I. Oh, yeah, we do. To a what? gym that we don't even live near anymore. Oh shoot, man, man, that that sounds that sounds like a quite the quite the resolution there. Are you guys oh, gonna renew? Oh, that's not mine. No. Oh, wait, wait, do you have one? No, I I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I think we should continually try and better ourselves throughout the year, um, rather than just setting one time of the year to make some big commitment that you're gonna end up faltering on. I think that's a faulty plan to begin with, and if you're continually trying to get better. It's a huge commitment without feeling like a huge commitment. Uh, I feel like there might be value, though, because it's for me, it's like a mental thing because it's like I've used actively habit apps and track progress on things. So I went on a diet a while ago and I started on a Sunday because Sunday is like the first you know uh, week of the month. And then I can look at the, uh, the, you know, the counter thing for the street counter. It's like a habit app, it counts the streaks. And for me, it was really appealing to see Sunday, Monday, like the whole week filled up. If I started on a Monday, then there'd be one little thing missing. So for me, Sunday's the best day to, to start things. And I've had many habits I've started and kind of kept. I meditated for like 180 days at one point. Now my habit keeping has gone to crap. But at that point in my life, I could keep habits. And for me, starting at a particular time was very important. So I could see some usefulness in maybe the new year being the year to do that with, but it doesn't seem like a little bit of a long time. Uh, what do you think, B? Um, I kind of see both of your points. I know that normally I don't do New Year's resolutions because I know I'm not really big on keeping up with them, like on appearances or anything. I just, I don't know. But this year I'm at my point where I turned 30, so it's like I got to do something with my life anything so new year's resolution would be a good place to start for me Mm -hmm. and i was just like i'm getting older i i gotta eat better so that's that's gonna be it and i'm baby steps at a time like i can't cut out cake from my life so i'm gonna start with donuts you know something like that (laughs) (laughs) 
baby steps. I do think that New Year's resolutions do give people also a chance to be honest to themselves about the state of their life. Because it's like you ignore things the whole year, and then once a year you say, yeah, this is a problem. Right. You actually hold yourself kind of accountable, even if it's just for a moment. And that's what I did. I looked in the mirror. I'm like, oh, my God, that's a new wrinkle. I really am getting older. And then it's like, what can I do? Because I really kind of let myself go. So it's like I made a mental checklist of all the bad things that I've done <laughs> to give myself. All the murders <laughs> Rapes. <laughs> I'm a convict. <sighs> yeah. So, anyways, and I just like make a mental checklist and was like, you know, you're a huge part of the problem. You're doing this to yourself, B. And then I'm like, I know. So, what can I do? And then it's like, I know. Stop talking to yourself. I know. That is, yeah. <sighs> I, I do see your point, Steve, though, in general. I mean, do you think it's applicable to most people like that it's not it's not effective or is it just like the principle of which because it's like kind of both i think like i think nowadays like even it, like the i the the meme of creating a new year's resolution is a joke in and of itself that people know they're creating a new year's resolution and they're not going to uphold it so like it's a it's a meme to do it but and it's also part of doing of the meme to not follow through on it so, like, if you follow through on your New Year's resolution, is it really a New Year's resolution? Oh. That, that's a good way of thinking it, of it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Cause it, it, yeah, that is the meme. And, yeah, it's essentially saying, here's something I want to fix about myself that I'm going to try to fix for, like, two weeks, but we all know it's not going to work out. And this is this, like, that, yeah, that's, it's kind of like the inside little thing. I mm. wonder if, because there's a couple of my friends who are like, they want to do it and it's a reason to get themselves to do it but it's not reason enough and the new year it's everyone like you said it's a trend everyone you know kind of does it so it's like a support system if they can get one or two other people to do it with them so that they're more likely to do whatever it is for that much longer to better themselves and then i think after a while because they're not getting instant gratification it's like screw it and we're done but it starts out with the thought of I need this support and they have like-minded support f- for that time, maybe. Support can be very powerful for, for actually completing a task that you don't really want to do. Because if you're doing that experience with somebody else, it's more enjoyable. And it's not you holding yourself accountable. It's somebody else holding you accountable and you holding them accountable. Um, and as long as at least one of you is strong enough to hold out, you're fine. But you can also get caught in the trap of, that person bringing you down because they drop off and convince you to do the same appeal to your your less strong side versus let it when nor maybe by yourself you would have actually followed through on it right this has me thinking a little bit i mean this might be a little bit technical but i kind of i kind of wonder if there might be a a way to get people to stick to their goals more if you can give more immediate results or at least the appearance of more immediate results i mean let's say that um it's like the effort you put in something will cause like some dopamine reaction and so on and so forth so let's let's say that let's say you start working out and you see immediate results more people would be more likely to go back to the gym seeing those results but what tends to happen is people go out and work for out for like two weeks or a month and they don't see very much improvement and they're like oh fuck it it's not working discouragement so if there was a way to try to show people immediate more immediate results then it 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 could be a way to get them to stick to it and maybe that that solution is like uh drugs like like you could you know give them like a like a fat burners and stuff um yeah yeah or maybe you can just get an image of them in photoshop and say this could be you in 2 months and like realistically Show them like an, a possible end result that's a realistic end result for them. Maybe get them a picture of somebody else mm. and say, mm. this could be who you're sleeping with in a couple of months. <laughs> I know that. Oh. Okay, this one would probably work for guys pretty well. Oh, I know. Or a girls. gym where one of the workout machines is a woman. Because the best way to lose weight is sex. It uses every part of your body. 
You know, mo- actually, most of them. Well, I think that the brothel mm. gym. <gasps> Ooh. There could be men too. I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe there's a maybe there's a butt section and a vagina section. There's there's that girl in uh, high school. Uh, she, she used to be really fat and you know she's ugly, but she's still ugly. But uh, anyway, so, so she was really fat, and then uh, we eventually. So she's really fat. So like you say, eleventh grade. And then twelfth grade comes, and she we go we get back from summer vacation, and she comes back, and she's like skinny, and we're like, what the fuck happened here? And then there's a lot of talk about it and stuff, and we found out that she started this, this, she was really gross, and this one guy that we kind of knew started fucking her, and they fucked so much over the summer that she just lost all this weight. And well, maybe it was part of the exercise. <laughs> But maybe it was part that she actually got some self-worth at that point and didn't need to eat as a coping mechanism. But if I remember correctly, that's when the cafeteria stopped selling chocolate chip bagels. <laughs> actually, oh, So that may have been a point. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I actually had a friend who was overweight and then she started became, becoming sexually active and because she was, she wanted to be more desirable. She wanted to like stay, I guess, competitive with the other. <laughs> That's horrible. But in her, because she's explained it that way, she wanted to be more competitive. And in order to do that, she had to fix her body image. I, I don't, it's not a, I don't think it's an indelid reason. I, 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 Would that be a legal way to have prostitution? It's not, they're not paying for sex. They're paying for a workout partner. I don't know. I have a theory on that all on its own. Which part? Oh, the paying? I, no, like legalizing prostitution. Like, mm-hmm. I'm I, saying a loophole. Uh, oh, okay, loophole. Without having to actually pass legislation. Well, yeah, but that's what. I, I want to hear your theory. Oh. Well, I want to be a madam, like really bad. And it's just uh, it's the female version of a pimp, yeah, in a whorehouse though but i want i want my I want my workers to be like I want them to work for themselves, I want them to you know in a sense be like kind of upscale, and um, so I was like, how can we legalize how can we do this legally because it's not legal? Well, porn is legal. And other things are legal, such as obtaining, like, old abandoned motels or hotels, renovating them, and getting these workers to come in, and you can rent out rooms that they can live in or suites, and uh, or they give you a, a cut of their profits to kind of, like, rent out these places for themselves that they can live in. So now they're in a safe place. They're not dirty. They're not walking the streets. They get to choose their clientele. They can turn it down. And you're getting paid. They're paid. And, um, you know, so these these men and women are coming in and buying out the rooms, not the people. They're not buying out the sex. They're buying out the rooms. And um, There just happens to be a vagina in the room. <laughs> Or or penis. So what you're or, saying? Yeah, exactly. Like it's just it's just a thing. Um, the other thing is I care about the safety and the health of my my. Oh wait wait wait. So they buy out the room, mm-hmm. knowing that there's a, a roommate. Right. There's somebody else. Like there's two people living within that room. Maybe there's two beds. Right. And if they happen to have sex, that's you know a consensual thing between two adults. Two adults. That has nothing to do with the money. Yep. And it, for those who are kind of kinky, I mean, and such, I want to have like... A basement level. <laughs> no, even oh. better. Like, I want there to be video cameras everywhere so that like everything... Because I, I want my workers to be safe too. And I want to keep it running. And with the permission of and consent form signed from said adults, now we have porn. They're, they're doing their own porn and we're just going to sell them a copy of that tape. But it's more for a security thing for for my workers. I haven't figured out healthcare, but I want healthcare for them too. There'd be some technical aspects to that because if you were, say, responsible for the prostitution, yeah, then you would be required to get them testing. So that mm-hmm. I think that'd fall on you. But if you had some sort of like independent contractor thing, you might be able to say that's on them to. Uh, what What about this? They 
they work for the hotel. Say they're cleaning ladies, or maybe one's a janitor, one's a cook, one's a cook. So they do, you know, maybe maybe they only have to cook once a week. So that's you know that's their job, but and that's what they're being paid for. They get a salary, which is X amount of of dollars, whatever. And as part of their compensation package, they get maybe health care. They get a room. They get room and board. Or room so all of discounts. that is all of that is rolled into that into their job at the hotel. Exactly. And if they happen to have sex with people, you know that's Consenting just consenting adults. If they if they happen to have sex with somebody who happens to spend the night there, that's just two consenting adults having sex, and it's not related to money at all. Right. I. I mean, I haven't obviously like worked it all out in my head, but that's just like something that I thought about. And having the room at a discount, they can they can live there. That's that's you know their room. It's like a hairdresser renting out a booth. You know they get it. They have to pay money towards it every month, but it's discounted so that they can take their clients there and do their hair. That would also incentivize them to keep their own workspace clean. Exactly. Because that's where they live. Exactly. They just happen to also have sex there with people who aren't paying money for sex. They're paying money for the room. Right. And the client, because I want my people to be safe, they can turn down clientele. Someone goes and says, I want to pay this for this room, this suite or whatever. And maybe that girl or guy is- Meet your roommate. Exactly. And maybe they don't feel, it's like a little cocktail hour. We'll get on drinks. Mm-hmm. They can like interview, you know? Oh yeah. You can have an interview here. The potential roommates. Exactly. Choose your it's, roommate. You're choosing the suite that you're, you're, you're exactly. No, you're choosing the suite. And- <laughs> The roommate is an asset within the suite. Correct. So like, and if they don't feel safe with it, I'm not, if they say no, I'm going to back that person up it, because yes, it's their money, but it's my money. It's my business too. So mm-hmm. if my girl or guy. It's not their money. They're not being paid for that. Right. Oh, okay. I yeah, understand well. the concept though. T- to be honest, it's like, uh, I I figured you're like, maybe okay with prostitution be. Absolutely. I didn't think really imagine you being the sort of person who would want to run a prostitution gig you damn straight i do but at the same time i i, I think i feel like i'm not I'm, sur- I'm surprised but at the same time i can imagine you want guys to get laid you want to get people hooked up and laid yeah it's yeah it's, yeah I, huh. see it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of one of those things like like on the office where a character does something something's revealed about them and it's surprising but you're like i'm not surprised it's one of those things. Is that a bad thing? Is this a bad thing? No, no, no. It's, it's, no, no, no. I, I, I dig it. I like it. Okay, because I get a lot of side-eye glances when I say this to people. So your New Year's resolution, <laughs> which is I think where we started, <laughs> is to become a madam. Mm-hmm. Nate? Okay, so like I was talking about with how I used to be very good with habits and doing things, I, I've gotten pretty bad at it over yeah, the last... Yeah, your meth habits dropped right off. Yeah, yeah, my <laughs> meth habits. Uh, and I'm kind of annoyed with it because I, I used to be really good, but due to some uh, some different factors in my life, keeping those habits have been very difficult. So I'm changing some life factors to allow for a better better me let's say uh i I used to track what i ate i used to meditate every day i used to have i I used to have all these little tasks i do i was like i had a number of i just i had a gym schedule and i don't like do any of that shit anymore and it really annoys me because i know i have that potential and i also have potential to kind of warn more things improve myself and do all this kind of stuff but it's just like i feel like i've been like uh, petered out and my resolution, and it more just happens to coincide with, you know, January, you know, around January 1st, you know, my decision to make this life decision. Uh, the life decision is to do with something, you know, regarding the stress level. It's not, you know, that this just decision in itself is not taking the resolution. But the resolution is to, uh, you know, move forward and then to structure my life again back around these habits and these tasks and these getting things done and, imp- and improving myself because th- that's where I was doing the best. Yeah, that sounds like quite a resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Sorry. The, the, the resolution is to become old Nate. The resolution <laughs> is to go back to the old Nate. Back to the old Nate. The old Nate was better. Yeah. New Nate. New Nate's a little funnier though. I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's definitely got better style. That's true. That's true. way better style. Mm-hmm. You, you should see, like I just bought this jacket. This jacket is amazing. Yeah, I mean, the, those short shorts are working too. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I do kind of make sure they ride up a little bit too far just to like, like have you guys avoid eye contact with my uh, massive thighs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, my quads do poke through my thighs, so it's not like they're like massive because they're fat, but they're massive because they're somewhat muscular. Mm-hmm. So, so I it, even it, look at you right part now. of that isn't thigh. I mean, yeah, my, my biceps. I, I do like go like this from time to time, like you know, like pretend like I'm stretching and flex my biceps. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and my chest pokes through a little bit. I mean, hopefully, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of warm in here, so not the nipples or anything. But uh, yeah, bring back the old mate. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag old mate. Old Greg. <laughs> Your old Greg's brother. Uh, speaking of hashtags. Smart comedy. Oh yeah, that that took off. That was trending for quite a while. Really? really? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the sidebar, how it says trending now, and then like however many, it was it was trending for quite a while. Um, there's there's a photo of it on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash We Need to Talk Show. And uh, if you if you want to see it trending again, I mean, you can get it trending if you retweet the hashtag, right? Absolutely. And you retweet it at... WNTT1, our Twitter. Right, right. And uh, we actually got our first Patreon donor, which is... Thank you very much for that. We did? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't even aware. Yeah. uh, Thank you to DPC Gaming for being our first Patreon donor. You are amazing. We love you guys. And it's very appreciative that you give back to the community in this kind of way. Absolutely. And by the way, uh, completely unrelated to the donation from them, TPC Gaming is an awesome site. You should go to it, tpcgaming.com. It's Canada-based, but it's a bunch of friends. It's a community all playing games together. Sometimes they have tournaments, and you can have your name on their website forever if you win the tournament. Um, And, you know, they're Canadian, so there's some competition there, but nothing an American can't handle. I mean... Yeah, I mean, C- Canadians and competition, that's not really a thing that really, uh, you, you know, you don't really think that. You think you think this maple syrup and hockey, really. I mean, competition. Uh. Speaking of which, there's an NHL 18 tournament coming up at some point, um, which I very well may or may not be a part of. You'll have to check it out to find out. That's tpcgaming.com. Till next time. We need to talk.